Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today we have a very interesting piece. We have a Jeja watch that I bought at uh, auction. It's interesting because it's a Jeja without Le Coutre. Yeah? So uh, I'm really interesting to see what's uh, inside the watch. First we put it on a time grapher and as you can see the result is not amazing. It's losing a lot of time, gaining sorry, a lot of time per day. The amplitude is a bit uh, low. So let's see if we can uh, fix it at the end. Yeah. First, let's open the case back and see what's inside. Okay, so let's get the case back off and see what's inside. Okay, we are uh, with an ETA movement, which is a 2390, I think. We will see later on when we when we disassemble it. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's a bit strange to find uh, an ETA movement in a in a Jeja watch, but uh, I found I look a bit on the, on the history of this watch, and I will tell you a bit more later. So first, we remove the movement and the dial from the case, and you can see the hands are a, a bit special, especially that the the second hand it looks like a, it has it looks like an hammer on a, on the short side. So yeah, that's uh, interesting. Okay, I put the stem back. It's a screw down. Uh, it's, it's a screw holding, holding the stem. Yeah. Okay. So now I can adjust the uh, hour, and I will uh, align the hands together so to make sure I can I can remove them easily. Okay, that's good. And I will use uh, a protection. The dial is already. You will see a bit later on, but the dial. Uh, is scratched already uh, by the previous watchmaker, I think. So yeah, uh, now I will try to to avoid any uh, extra damage. I put some protection, and I can remove the second hand with the presso tool and uh, minute hand. But the our hand is like all the way down against the movement, which is a bit strange because normally it's, uh, it's always a gap between the our hand and the, the dial. So that's why maybe it was a bit weird on a time grapher because you, you had some friction between the hour hand and the dial. Uh, and it's not good that you, there, there is no gap between uh, between the hand and the dial. So even with the, lever, with the lever, I struggled to remove it because it was all the way down. So I could not get underneath. So I tried to go very slowly underneath, very gently, and here we go is just just off so now i will uh, remove the hand and i use my wooden tips uh, or carbon tips tweezers just to make sure i don't scratch the dial uh, like it was done before you, you saw the dial was damaged so now i will unscrew the dial fit screw just to remove the remove the dial from the movement There we go. The dial is, is off now. We set the movement aside and I will uh, store everything safely. So protect the dial and the hands uh, in, in, a, in a box. So like that, it will stay uh, in a nice shape while I work on the movement here. Yeah? There we go. That's out of the way now. And now let's focus on the movement. So first on the, on the dial side, I will remove the, the hour wheel. And you can see the pinion is uh, integrated on, uh, on the wheel, yeah? on another wheel. So I will uh, I will remove that later. So first, as always, let's remove the power. Gently release the power. There we go, everything is out. And now I can start by removing uh, the balance assembly. I will keep it aside and as it is uh, the most delicate part of the watch, I don't want to, to risk any damage to the, to the balance assembly. Just 
just need to remove it very gently just checking quickly that the the hairspring is 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 uh, fully is in good shape no kinks or anything it looks good so i set it aside and we can carry on by removing the palette for cock and the palette fork the movement as you see is looking uh, good it's no it's not very dirty no damage on it i think it just need a good uh, clean and a good maintenance and re re and regrease everything but nothing bad so far on the movement just checking the handshake on the wheels and you see the 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 jewels are, are covered yeah like they're they are not open jewels there is a plate on the top of every jewel so we see when we when we when, when we will oil them we will have to remove this plate uh yeah it's a bit different than uh, other mechanism okay so first let's remove the train wheel bridge holding up with two screws just with a screwdriver blade just gently lift it not to damage any of the of the wheel underneath there we go and now we can see the the train of wheel so first because the wheels you can see are underneath uh, the ratchet wheel so first i will remove the crown wheel with a reverse credit screw thread screw sorry just need to be careful when you remove it it's quite a thick uh, thick crown wheel so just remove it very slowly there we go it's just off and there is a little ring around the pivot point that i put aside now i'm going to remove the ratchet wheel this one has a normal 3d screw so it's like uh, you, you unscrew it uh, the normal way if you want there we go just turn it it's just missing like yeah, a bit of a thread there we go just remove the wheel and you can see underneath the click it's a very different design it's like a, like a long arm with uh, you, we, you can see it looks like a bit the yoke on the other side it's a it's a very strange design and now i can remove the wheel from the from the train of wheel very easily because there is nothing in the way and i will remove the you see there is one which is underneath the main spring barrel so first i need to to, to remove the plate which is holding in place by three screws this one And after we'll be able to remove the main spring barrel assembly and the wheel which is uh, underneath so on this watch I, I did not find much information but i saw some similar watch uh, some similar uh, jeja watch with uh, the eta movement it was a run made in the 70s apparently uh, only done for the paris boutique so it's a very unique watch there is not many of them it's a special run uh, like i said for the paris boutique there is several uh, dial design uh, i found one with uh, roman uh, numerals as well uh, and all of them with uh, with uh, this eta movement which is a very good uh, eta movement so it's quite a, a unique watch from uh, jeja le Cous, but as you, as you could see on the dial it's uh, only a, a, a jeja watch which reminds me as well some uh, uh, if you if you like uh, sports car or cars in general you will have on some vintage uh, uh, sports car you will have a, a Jeja counter and uh, it's exactly the same uh, design on the dial of this watch so uh, it's quite nice it's uh, it's very nice it's a very nice link to 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 the automotive sport industry okay so now we move to the other side and we are going to remove uh, the rest of the, of the of the assembly so this is a minute wheel
which had a, a bridge on the top that I just removed. And this is the assembly uh, with the yoke on it, uh, with the, sorry, the cannon pinion. Okay, so the last uh, couple of parts now. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Subscribe to my channel, it will help me a lot to, to motivate me to carry on doing some video. And if you have any suggestion, please put some comments uh, on the video that will help me as well to grow the, the channel and put uh, better contents. Thank you. Okay, so now I remove the yoke and the winding stems and the last uh, two parts uh, left on the, on the mechanism just uh, fall out when you remove the stem okay so now let's re disassemble the main spring barrel so remove the top lid of the barrel and i'm going to remove the barrel bar inside and the main spring uh, because we need to clean everything go in uh, everything we go in uh, in a cleaning machine to make sure everything is uh, perfectly clean so the watch uh, will run uh, good again. As you can see at the beginning, uh, on a time grapher it was not perfect. It's always difficult to know where it's coming from, so you just want to clean and uh, everything, re oil and regrease everything, so that you are sure at the end that you will have the, the best result. Yeah. The main spring is uh, looking good, so I will reuse the same. It looks quite uh, new and in good shape, so I will uh, I will reuse it. Okay, so like I said, we put everything in a cleaning basket and all the parts are going to go in a, in a washing machine. There we go, after cleaning the watch, now we are going to uh, start the assembly. So first, we are going to start by the, the last bit we disassembled, so the main spring barrel. First, put a bit of grease inside. Just put four dots of grease, and I will use the same on the, on the barrel lid, so that the, the main spring barrel is lubricated at the top and the bottom. And I already already winded the main spring in the in the winding set that I have from Bergen, and so now I can just put the main spring back in a barrel. There we go. Just put some oil inside where when the barrel arbor is gonna come on one side, just to make sure it can rotate and uh, freely and it's, it's well lubricated that there is not so no to avoid wear and friction. And now I can fit the barrel arbor. So just need to make sure it's aligned in with one of the hole. I use a kind of a metal, a metal block to make sure, uh, because on the other side you will have a part coming out of the barrel, so you need to be above a hole, and now I can press it down. There we go. Now it just went in place. I can press it down, make sure it's located on a spring, and I can put the barrel back on. And to close it, you will see, I use one of the plastic tools made for it, specially made to close uh, the barrel assembly. Here you go, so I just put it in and now with the, just need to make sure it's aligned and right in the center. And I just push and it will click in place and it will be fully closed. I just put a bit of grease on the top as well, like I did uh, on the other side, just to make sure it's nicely lubricated on the top side of the barrel arbor. Now I can set the main spring barrel aside and we can carry on with the rest of the mechanism. First, we are going to oil on the balance assembly so first we remove the, the stone on the top side. 
So now I, I will dip everything in a solution, a special solution that will uh, help all the oil that I'm going to put in place. The oil will not move, will stay uh, at the place uh, where I'm going to put it. So that's a process that I use, uh, a product that is used just to make sure the lubrification of these parts stay in a, in a, in a right place. And as you can see, this uh, product is called Fix or Drop. So now I'm going to put, uh, I just leave it inside for like 10, 15 seconds, not uh, very long. And I'm going to part, put the parts uh, on this uh, paper just to, to dry them. And after that, uh, when the parts are put in Fix or Drop, we can, we can oil them. So the pallet fork, uh, obviously, will be oiled at the end. Now I'm just uh, cleaning the pivot point, just because you don't really want to have too much fix or drop on these uh, bits. The fix or drop will be used on the stones. Um, so here I oiled the stone. So now I put it back in the in the shock setting system. It's kept in place uh, by this uh, this spring which is on the top, which I'm closing right now. And I will, do, I will do exactly the same thing on the other side. So first I put it in fix or drop and you see now I uh, oil it, put a, a tiny drop of oil right in the center of the stone and I, I will put the capstone on top of it. So the oil stay uh, captured in the middle and you will have uh, the pivot from the balance assembly coming th right through the middle and it will stay oiled all the way. Uh, and this is a very important part of the watch that you need to be clean very well. Uh, put some fixo drop and oil in the right place with the right amount. Okay, and so now as on the other side, uh, I close, I put it back into the shock system and close the spring on the top. And this, is, this system will prevent uh, the balance assembly uh, staff uh, not to be broken in case there is a shock or a fall of the watch. And before, when uh, before the shock system was existing, it was a very common uh, failure uh, to to break to break the pivot point. So you will have to change uh, the parts. And this uh, shock system is uh, is very good. Okay, so I put a bit of oil first. Where well, we're gonna put uh, the mainspring barrel. But first, remember there is these wheels that go underneath the mainspring barrel, so I need to put it first, and now I can put the mainspring barrel in place. Okay, and so now I can carry on to assemble the train of wheel by putting all the wheel in the right place into their um, into their pivot point into the jewels. Need to put it like yeah, I need to make sure it's located properly into the bottom jewels and after when we put the bridge on the top uh, that will align the top uh, pivot. I'm just oiling the the part of, that go inside the movement from the center wheel. And I put it in place. So now all the wheels from the train of wheels are, are, in, are in place. So we can put the bridge on the top. And you can see I, I keep all my parts in uh, after cleaning. I put all the parts in a little box to make sure they stay clean. And so they don't get contaminated by dust or any other particle. So you just want to keep them as clean as possible to keep them here. Yeah. Okay, so now I put the bridge back in place and I need to make sure that all the wheels are aligning and, and falling into the, the pivots, into the jewels. So we gently push and try to align all the wheels. And you can see now everything is aligned. So when I move 
the mainspring barrel, all the wheels are turning. We just put in place as well the mainspring barrel assembly. There we go. That's just it's uh, much easier to put in place because there is only the mainspring barrel on this one that need to be aligned. And uh, now I will screw everything down to make sure it stay in place. So the first I will use plastic stick to make sure it doesn't move while uh, while uh, putting the screw. And I will gently screw it down. And the first thing you want to do is you don't want to check that when you screw it down, yeah, the wheels are turning. So that looks good. We can carry on with uh, with the rest of the assembly. So far, it's uh, very good. Uh, it's, so far, it's going very well on this movement. Like I said, uh, I did not see many parts which are damaged or any parts that need to be changed. Uh, there is no end shake, the main spring barrel. Uh, so yeah, here I had to remove the main spring barrel uh, bridge because before putting the bridge, we need to put the screw that will hold um, the stem on the other side. There we go, now put it on and now I can put the bridge. Because there is a, a little shoulder on this uh, screw, so you cannot put it uh, after the bridge. There we go, now it's in place. And I can finish uh, putting the bridge by putting the three screws uh, on the bridge. Yeah. Just missing one screw, so last one was still in a, in a box. So just need to make sure to align it straight up and up, it goes straight in a, straight in a hole. Just speed it up a bit, so just screw all the three screws of the bridge and now we can concentrate uh, to reassemble the parts which are on the top of the main spring barrel bridge first let's put some uh, some oil again to make sure it's nicely lubricated between the, the bridge and the main spring barrel this is a very important part of the watch uh, because yeah, this is what we give the main spring barrel that what will give as well the amplitude to the watch. So you don't want to have too much friction or else your amplitude of the watch uh, will be low. Yeah. This is a click spring. I mean the click, sorry, and after we'll have the, the spring. So you can see it's a very different design that what we, compared to what we can find on uh, more traditional movement, so it's a long arm that will come against the, the ratchet wheel. And this is a spring to make sure he stay under tension and it will block the ratchet wheel when you when you un, when you don't wind the watch. Put a bit of oil as well on these points because yes, yeah, that's what the point that we'll see the rotation of this uh, of this arm. And now we can put uh, the ratchet wheel on top of it. Just need to make sure it's aligned. It's a square shape hole, so just need to make sure it's aligned with the barrel arbor. There we go. Now it's nicely in place and can put the screw just to make sure I don't mix uh, screws with the between the ratchet and the crown wheel but they are on this watch uh, one is a normal thread this one is like a normal thread and the other one is a river threaded there we go so now the ratchet wheel is in place just use I will just use a plastic stick to hold it in place while 
I put a bit of torque on the, on the screw. There we go, and you can see everything is turning when I uh, turn the mainspring barrel assembly. Okay, so first I need to put, uh, remember to put the small ring that go around the crown wheel, in the middle of the crown wheel, and put a bit of oil on everything, just to make sure it stays nicely lubricated and the same to prevent some wear. There we go, and now we can put uh, the crown wheel. Put it in place, just need to make sure the teeth are aligning between the crown wheel and the uh, ratchet wheel, and we can put the screw that will hold in place the crown wheel. So remember that uh, I do I, I do this is my uh, passion I do this as a hobby I'm not a professional so if you see uh, if you have any nice tips as well to share in the comments uh, that's more than uh, more than welcome yeah I like because yeah, I like this hobby because I'm always learning always finding new stuff always uh, every watch there is a different problem to solve and yeah I'm always learning new tips so. That's what. That's why I like this uh, this hobby. Uh, I'm learning every day, so this is something uh, something that keep me really passionate about this hobby. Okay, so now we move to the dial side. First, we are going to assemble the clutch and the parts uh, that we go through the the winding stem. But first, we need to make sure it's greased properly. So in this part, I will use some grease. Okay, so just need to make sure to put a lot of grease on these uh, parts because yeah, they will come in contact and they will see a lot of friction when you wind or set the time of the watch. So yeah, you just need to make sure you put a good amount of grease on this uh, on this wheel. Now I put it in place in the groove and after I can put the clutch wheel in place okay so now just to make sure the two parts there we go now it's in place the two parts I need to put the winding stem that again need to put some grease on the parts that we come in contact metal to metal Now I can introduce the stem. And there we go, you will see, if we go straight in the middle. Yeah, just need to make sure everything is aligned. It's perfectly in place. So now let's carry on. We need to first oil all the pivot points. So I will use oil the center points and the point where we have so the wheels and the yoke so that the pivot points where the wheels are going to come so just need to make sure it's nicely lubricated and again the last uh, point is a point where the yoke is going to rotate around so just need to make sure it's uh, oiled properly as well okay perfect so now everything is oiled we can focus on uh, on the assembly So first I put uh, this wheel, I, I greased as well the point underneath the, between the wheel and the cannon pinion. So now it's in place, sitting down. This part is screwed with, remember, the screws that I put on the other side on the main spring barrel, that I had to remove the main spring barrel, just to make sure uh, I put uh, these uh, shouldered screws. 
uh, it's quite tricky to put so I pull it off camera screw it off camera so now it's in place uh, it stays in place so the waning stem will stay in place and I can put so now I'm putting the yoke so I go right in the middle of the clutch and I can put the yoke spring that will give the tension when you pull the stem to change between a winding, uh, the winding uh, setup and the setting time setup. Okay, so now it's in place. I'm putting the wheels that will uh, do the link between the winding stem and uh, the minute and hour wheel. So that's a meted wheel. I had to remove the cannon pinion wheel because it was in the way. But actually, it's, uh, it's, you will see later, it's, uh, it's, it's wrong because the wheel need to go underneath. So first I need to screw the plate that will keep uh, the mechanism, the setting mechanism in place with this long arm that uh, will act as a spring to switch between the two position, winding and uh, setting time. Okay, so now it's in place, perfect. I'm just checking. When I pull, I just uh, grease everything and when I pull yeah you can see the two position winding and now it's uh, second position is time setting just put a bit of grease on the point on this uh, long arm that act as a spring with the two position like I said so I'm going to remove the minute wheel to put back the the wheel with the cannon pinion. There we go, it's sitting perfectly. You can see it's uh, driving with the other wheel on the other side. Now I can put back, back the minute wheel. And there is a little bridge that come uh, on top of the minute wheel to make sure it stay in place. So here we go. It's nicely located. Just put... Now I just need to screw it down. Just to make sure it stay in place. There we go. Just need to make sure it's aligned because I have a second screw to put on. Just putting the second one and uh, after that, we should be done with the mechanism. Just need to make sure, uh, so I oil all the, all the jewels for the watch to, to run uh, to run freely and you can see now I speed it up a bit but I'm oiling every single point on the other side as well with this strange design where you have a, a plate on top of uh, every single jewels so I have to remove them clip them with a bit of radical put a bit of a drop of oil and uh, close them again so I have to do, I have to do that for uh, all three uh, all three points There we go. And last, I hold the center uh, center wheel. So now everything is oiled uh, from both sides. So we can put the pallet fork. Like the train of wheel, same, it's uh, with, uh, in between two jewels. So just need to make sure it's aligned properly on the bottom and top jewels. So first we, we align it on the bottom jewels, just to make sure it rotate 
you can see it's rotating around a point uh, around the, this axis so it's meaning it's in a, in a bottom joules and now I'm going to put the palette for corks with the joule with one joule on the top and that will align the top pivot you just need to be really careful because you don't want to bend to bend the part to bend the pivot point because they are very thin And very fragile so you just need to go very slowly so it's the same process as the train of bridge I use plastic stick to hold it in place and you can see it just drop in place and now you can see it's rotating around the axis so it's perfect use a screw to hold it in place There we go. Now it's nicely secure in place. Now that the pallet fork is uh, in place, we're just gonna put. Uh, I'm going. I'm gonna fully wind the watch, and I'm gonna check if the pallet fork is rocking left and right. If it's rocking left and right, it means the mechanism is transmitting the power. You can see. Oh, it's clicking. So that's perfect. So now the last bit of the mechanism is a balance assembly with which we oiled uh, at the beginning. So it's uh, ready to go in place. Oh, you can see it wants to go, but uh, it's still not fully in place. And there we go. Nice. It's beating. So that's uh, one step, uh, one good step done. It means that the mechanism is assembled properly. And obviously after the time grapher we confirm if the accuracy is there. So if there is a friction and the uh, oiling is uh, is good. But it's always quite a relief to see that uh, that the movement is beating. So now you can see it stopped beating because the screw did not go in perfectly flat. So I just need to make sure everything is sitting flat. And I will screw it fully down. You want to stop, but you can see when the screw is fully down, everything is uh, is parallel to the plate, so it's uh, it's running pretty smoothly. So that's very good. Okay, we set the movement aside to let it run for 24 hours to to check everything is okay. So let's I give a, a clean to the die, a quick clean to the die. It's not in bad shape, but uh, you can see it's, it's scratched, but that I cannot uh, fix it. Uh, I don't want to repaint the dial. Again, same thing. A, a quick, a quick polish to the to the hands. There we go. Just to make sure it looks uh, it's, uh, looks very shiny and uh, very clean. So I do this uh, second hand as well, which has a very strange shape. Okay, so now let's go, go back to the mechanism. We let it run for a while. Now I'm gonna put the, the last part, the how wheel. And go put it in place and now let's put back the dial on top. And you can see the dial with uh, the Jejar inscription on it. Like I said, Nice reminder to some uh, sports car counters. I I like the I like the dial. Okay, so screw the, the dial fit screw to make sure the dial stay stay in place. And now, what's left? We need to put uh, the ends uh, back on the, back on the dial. First, let's put our hand. And you remember. Like I said at the beginning, it was pressed all the way down. So now I just try to make sure it's pressed not all the way down and keep a space with the dial. Or else we cause too much friction. Now I put a minute hand. And the last one, the second hand. 
just push it gently to make sure it stay in place. I gave a quick clean to the case and, uh, and the crystal. So let's put uh, the mechanism now, let's put the stem back. Now I just screw back in place just to make sure it stay uh, in place, doesn't move. Put the ring around just to make sure the mechanism doesn't move. And just screw the, the case back. There we go. So now the case back is in. Just tie it. Uh, I will first tie it by hand, and I will use the rubber ball uh, to to close it to tie it a bit more. There we go. Good. So the watch is uh, is done. So now let's see if we put it on a time grapher, which kind of result we we are getting. Okay, as you can see, the amplitude is much higher at 320. So yes, the clean and the oiling did uh, did some good job with the with the amplitude, and you can see the 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 error, the rate is uh, losing a bit or around zero. So which is which is very good, and uh, what's the most important? It's very constant. It doesn't go up and down too much like what we had at the beginning, where it was gaining a lot or gaining less. So. I'm very happy with the with the result on this watch. The watch is running very well and I have a very nice watch to add to my collection. So thanks for watching. Bye bye.